Hello, welcome back for another video on Ark Survival Ascended. Today we're diving into 50 tips and tricks you need to know when playing the Scorched Earth map. I have roughly laid out the video in order of progression, starting off with beginner tips and tricks while moving into advanced later in the video. We've got a lot to talk about, so let's get straight into it. Kicking things off, let's focus on keeping you well hydrated, which can be a big problem when playing Scorched Earth due to the intense heat and lack of water on the map. Cactus sap is the most accessible source of water. It comes in two different forms. The small cactus bushes that look like this, which can be found very commonly in the center of the map. The bushes can be harvested by hand for a small amount and can be harvested more efficiently with a whip or a metal sickle. The second form is the cactus trees, which look like this. Just by punching or harvesting these trees will gradually fill your water level without even having to consume any cactus sap. But the best ways to harvest the cactus sap is via a stone or metal hatchet, with the chainsaw being the best method. Moving on, we have the Morella Tops. Once tamed, it can be used as a portable water tank. They are extremely common and are very good harvesters of the cactus sap bushes. Another thing to add, whenever cactus sap is in their inventory, they will automatically consume it, which will increase the water in their water tank. So you don't even have to take them to a water source to fill them up anymore. And if you're somehow not interested in taming one, wild ones can be killed, where you can access their water tank and drink from their carcass. The water jug bug is very common on Scorched Earth, and they are extremely beneficial to survivors. They look kind of freakish, but they're 100% passive. Walk on up to them, and you can suck all that sweet H2O straight out of their bum. There is also another variant of jug bug, which is the oil jug bug, and you can harvest these bugs the same way you would with the water jug bug, and grab 16 oil before it flies off, which can be a lifesaver at the early game. Although they cannot be tamed, what you can do is build a small pen, grapple them, and stick them in it, which technically, if you're hanging around the area for long long periods, they won't despawn and you'll have an unlimited source of oil or water. The Jaboa is the most important shoulder pet on Scorched Earth. Not only will they help you carry more items, with the 50% weight reduction for anything inside the inventory when on your shoulder, they have the ability to warn you of incoming weather storms, minutes before they occur. And some of these storms can be very dangerous, if getting caught out in them. The Jaboa will give you enough time to get yourself to a safe place to prepare for the storm. Bowlers are an important piece of equipment to carry around with you. When in the early game, you'll be wanting to carry a bucket load of them. Very common threats include terror birds, raptors, dire wolves, saber tooths, and deodons. And luckily for us, all of them can be bowlered, which will temporarily immobilize them for 30 seconds, giving you enough time to get away or take them out if you have the capability to do so. Fortitude is quite possibly the most important stat to level on your character. It is a measure of your resistance to the weather, torpidity, and disease. And this map is ridiculous ridiculously hot. This will be your go-to tool to help deal with the extreme heat. In this clip I had to level to 186 fortitude to overcome the 77 degrees C temperature, but I wouldn't recommend going that high, it's a waste of points. You will be able to find high quality desert armor or ghillie armor, which will most likely come at the later stages of the game. At the end of the day, you can always just do a mind wipe later on. The tent is an absolute lifesaver. I highly recommend bringing one with you at all times. Once placed down, it will slowly decay over time. Any players inside gain a massive insulation buff and will fully protect you from the effects of a sandstorm or heat wave. Being inside a tent is also the best way to cure heat stroke. Too hot? Stick a tent down. Too cold? Stick a tent down. Need to take shower? Stick a tent down. There's no better place to be than inside a tent. The whip is one of the most useful weapons in the game. It's great for harvesting bushes, can pick up any item off the ground, including drop packages, can temporarily stun a wide variety of creatures. When whipping tame creatures, will encourage them to move forward slightly, even when encumbered. Can force tamed flying creatures to land. In PvP, it has a 40% chance of disarming a player. It can whip riders off of their mounts, exceptionally good after being picked by a flyer. You can also wake up an unconscious player much quicker when whipping them into submission. The boomerang is another extremely useful weapon that can be unlocked at a low level, far earlier than tranks, and deals a lot of torpor. With the combination of bowlers, the boomerang will help you get some much needed tames at the early game. However, they will break like spears, so I recommend making a few. You'll be wanting to throw the boomerang at the creature's feet. This way you'll be able to skip the long return animation of the boomerang, making taming a lot quicker. Preserving salt is also one of the most important items in the game that you probably need to keep on you the majority of the time, especially when out taming or grabbing wyvern milk. When placed into any inventory or container, preserving salt will double the spoil timers of all perishable items, minus organic polymer. It can be crafted in the mortar and pestle or chemistry bench. It does have a spoil timer, however, if you store it in a vessel, it will pretty much have an unlimited spoil timer. 
Although this subject seems a little broken at the moment, as at least for me, generators never turn off during electrical storms anymore. However, it's most likely a bug and will probably get fixed, but wind locations are still very important in this game. You can view any area on the map's wind percentage by holding H on your keyboard. It will now also show up in the direct center of your inventory. The only place you can really get 100% is in the desert. However, there is this location inland that will offer 100% wind. Building in a location with 100% wind means you'll be able to power your electrical devices with a wind turbine 100% of the time without having to worry about generators or gasoline. To find silk, you'll be needing to search for these pretty purple flowers. They are found pretty much everywhere around the map. I'm here at the Green Obelisk just for a quick example. You can harvest these by hand with a whip or for best results using the metal sickle. And if you're looking for a bucket load of silk in one go, find yourself a Lymantria. They are very common in the center of the map. They can be bowled, killed, and chopped up for enough silk to keep you going for a while. Adobe structures are exclusive to scorched earth. It is pretty much the only material you can build your base out of without dying from extreme heat while being inside. For example, if you build your base out of metal, you will cook alive in a matter of seconds, unless you have a bunch of ACs in your building. Fat structures are the only other structure that will not cook you alive. Desert Cloth Armor is the go-to armor set when playing Scorched Earth. It doesn't exactly provide a lot of physical protection, however it does provide the best protection against hot and cold temperatures, and believe it or not, it can get pretty cold at night. The Desert Goggles will also improve visibility during a sandstorm. Explorer Notes are a quick way to level your character or your tame creatures. For the most part, they are located in ruins, so be sure to check out any ruins that you find. For every note picked up, you will gain 100 XP. The effect will last for 10 minutes and will give you double XP for that duration. Four times notes can also be found around the map. They do look very different to the standard Explorer Notes. All note locations can be found on the ARC wiki page. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. If possible, I'd highly recommend picking them up while riding one of your tame creatures, as your creature will also get the XP bonus. Buff. Collecting all Explorer Notes will unlock an additional 10 levels for your character, which is big in the game. The Direwolf is the perfect companion in helping you find Explorer Notes. When using the Crouch Key, your Direwolf will be able to sniff out nearby Explorer Notes. Adding to this, this ability will also sniff out hidden hostile creatures, for example the Rock Golem or Buried Pelovias. The Morella Tops is now the Morella Crops, and can now aid you in irrigating your crops. After planting seeds and fertilizing your crops, access your Morella Tops radial menu and click the option Enable Irrigation. Your Morella Tops will then go and irrigate any nearby crops that need water. Sandstorms can be detrimental if you get stuck out in them, draining water, stamina, and will impair you and your creature's ability to sprint. However, there are a couple of creatures that can thrive in a sandstorm. The Fazalasuchus, when burrowed, can completely move at full speed. So if there's ever a sandstorm, it's a great time to get flint. The Kangaroo is also a great way to get through a sandstorm. Their movement is still slowed, however, their charge jump ability works perfectly fine, allowing you to cover a lot of ground during a sandstorm. Another odd way that you can bypass the sandstorm effect is by using any creatures with access to a platform saddle. If you have an adobe structure covering the rider, the creature will still be able to sprint at normal speed. Keep in mind these creatures will still have their stamina drained by the sandstorm. However, their stamina can be regained once you dismount in a safe place. Cactus broth is a new dish that was added with the Scorched Earth map. Once consumed, it will reduce water consumption by 50%, increase heat resistance, and the best part is that it can almost make you invisible to wild creatures, especially when paired with ghillie armor. Once transfers to the island open up, using this broth is an extremely useful tactic to get through the underwater caves unnoticed. Killing and harvesting a vulture's carcass is a great source of spoiled meat, but the best way to instantly gain a ton of spoiled meat is with the toilet. You can stick all your meat in your toilet, Take a seat, log out, all the meat inside will instantly spoil. And of course, every time you flush the toilet, you receive one fertilizer and a temporary XP buff. 
Manually crafting cement and paste is the only decent way of quickly stocking up on it. The desert is the go-to spot to find chitin. My first choice to farm chitin is always the Megatherium. Due to there being so many bugs in the desert, you can really utilize its bug killer buff. The chainsaw is pretty decent at harvesting chitin, however I prefer to use the Megatherium as you can just steamroll everything without stopping once and barely taking any damage. And if you ever come across a deathworm, they will not be any problem for your Megatherium. The desert is also home to the best source of organic polymer, which is the Mantis. If I'm after organic polymer, I will always kill the Mantis and chop them up with the chainsaw, as it's the best way to gather it. Leading us on perfectly to your own organic polymer farm by taming mantis. Tame up a low level male and a bunch of low level females, breed them all up, let them fully mature and whenever you're ready for some organic polymer, let the slaughter commence, then chop them up with a chainsaw. The Phylocolio is one of the most popular battle mount picks for many survivors. We will just focus on its bleed attack, which is one of the strongest in the game. Whenever the Phyla uses its bite attack, it will inflict the status effect Nashed, and will drain 5% of the target's health over 5 seconds. This makes the Phyla exceptionally good for taking down anything with a massive health pool. The Titanosaur is one of the best XP farms in the game. You can weaken it with the Phyla while checking its health with a magnifying glass, as it does de-aggro quite quickly. Once you've weakened it enough, grab yourself some of those explorer nodes for the extra xp buff you will need to finish it off yourself if you kill it with the phyla's bleed you will not gain any xp my preferred way to finish it off is with a decent compound bow which will reward your survival with all the xp living next to a common rock golem spawn can have its benefits the phyla's bleed will completely ignore the natural armor of a rock golem allowing for an easy kill grab your anki or doed and you can harvest the rock golem's carcass for all those riches with the dodicarus being slightly better for harvesting the artifact of the crag cave is now the go-to spot for rare mushrooms. The cave entrance is located right in the mountains next to the blue obelisk. And there are two types of variants in this cave. The first type of the bright glowing blue mushrooms like this. The best way I've found to harvest these mushrooms is with the Procoptodon's kick attack. Once inside the cave you'll be wanting to head down the right path to find these mushrooms. These mushrooms are scattered throughout the path on the right side and there's also ledges above with more of these mushrooms on top. Which is great because the Procoptodon can also get you to these quite easily. The second variant of mushroom bush can be found a bit further into the cave underneath this bone. You can't miss it because you have to go past it to reach the artifact. And just get your kangaroo and jump on top of that bone and kick all you want and you will come out with a load of mushrooms. There's also a load more in the artifact chamber. This is what they look like and you'll be able to farm hundreds maybe even thousands from just one cave run depending on your harvesting rates. There is also a third type of bush in this cave and it's these pretty looking flowers. These are rare flower bushes. The Procoptodon is also great for harvesting these too. The Phoenix can be an absolute nightmare to find and tame. The Parasaur can make this task a whole lot easier. When accessing the Parasaur's radial menu, you can enable turret mode and can be picked up and carried around with a wyvern. It will ping nearby threats in the area, which are visible on screen with a red dot. You'll be able to find a Phoenix before the heatwave even begins. Everyone's first wyvern egg is always the most difficult to obtain. Any flyer you decide to use will always be a lot slower than the wild wyverns. By far the safest way is to just build a turret box right next to the wyvern trench. Park your flyer facing out from the nest, snatch the egg and fly as quick as you can to the turret box and your turrets will do all the work for you. The other method I use is with the moth as they're basically cannon fodder, poor little guys. But good saddles are quite easy to find, so do the same, snatch the egg and you want to fly towards the mountains and bait the wyverns into any wild creatures around. Most of the time it works, but sometimes it doesn't. In this case I got lucky and the wyverns aggroed on some wild creatures and I was able to get away by the skin of my teeth. Back in the day when playing Ark Survival Evolve, I used to always build a trap when milking female wyverns, due to the wyverns fleeing once they reach a certain torpor level. However, in Ark Survival Ascended, they don't seem to flee at all, or at least they don't for me, so the easiest way I've found is just turn up on the Procoptodon, shoot the lowest level female I can find in the trench to bait it out, ideally a lightning wyvern as they're no threat to the rider. Kite it around in circles while shooting it with tranks. Easiest milking I've ever done in my life, and you can also kill them afterwards for a decent amount of XP. The elemental attacks from the poison wyvern is a serious threat to your character as these poison balls are like homing rockets and they will lock onto you even when you think you're dodging and weaving like Keanu Reeves in the Matrix. However, if you wear a gas mask, you will be fully immune to the poison wyvern spit attack. Never dismount your wyvern when using the elemental attack. The attack can hit your character and will most likely insta-kill you. 
Rock golems are completely immune to wyvern elemental attacks. I do find they're really good for farming wyvern talons. I tend to just steal a fertilized egg and bait all the wyverns to the rock golems, where they can easily hulk smash them into oblivion. The new oasis cave near the red obelisk is good for many reasons. Three high quality loot crates can be found inside and a bunch of nasty creatures. And from my experience, all the creatures inside can be tamed. This includes the Electrophorus, which is the only aquatic creature that will spawn on this map. Another awesome creature that can only be found in caves and can also be tamed is the Akatina. There's a chance you'll be able to find lower levels, but you'll typically find them at level 200 or more. And these ridiculously high levels can also be tamed. On one times taming, this will be absolute pain, as you'll probably need stacks and stacks of sweet veggie cakes. I'm not really sure where you'd want to tame a ridiculously high level snail, but you can find lower levels too. Taking to the desert and hunting deathworms and alpha deathworms is the only half decent way to farm black pearls on the scorched earth map. They will never drop a lot, but we're gonna make do with what we got, and at least we get a load of XP while doing so. Sap can be harvested from the Joshua trees scattered throughout the map. However, there are two variants. One does not drop sap, and the other one does. The tree on the left is the lighter shade of Joshua tree. These cannot be harvested for sap, whereas the tree on the right is the darker shade of tree. These are the ones you want to be harvesting for sap, and by far the best best tool to use is the chainsaw once again. Here's my location on the map, there's a bunch of trees in this area. Desert crates are where you can find some of the best loot in the game. In this version of the map, there are only three locations to search. I'm not sure if this is intentional, but a lot of the time you can double loot these crates, as they will instantly respawn once you take the items out. If you want to know more about the locations of these crates, please go check out one of my previous videos. I'll leave a link in the description of the video and in a pinned comment. The Manticore boss fight is the only boss on the map, and it is one of the easiest bosses to beat, even on alpha difficulty. All you need is a half decent army of rexes. In ASE I ran this fight with some pretty bad rexes and primitive saddles, and beat alpha without taking any losses. It'll be the easiest 428 element you'll ever receive. Be sure to stick all of your belongings on one of your tame creatures, including all of the element and items you receive from the boss fight, because you will ascend from this boss fight, therefore when you respawn, you'll be completely butt naked. Also, when you do respawn, you'll receive a nice selection of chibis. And we all love chibis and love those extra levels.
and that is going to be the end of the video. It's been a marathon. I must admit I've lost many hours of sleep the last couple of days making this video. I really do hope you all enjoyed it and hopefully it will help you during your journey through Scorched Earth. If you did enjoy the video or found it helpful in any way, please consider liking, commenting, sharing and subscribing for more art content. There's plenty more and there's plenty more to come. It really helps me out and I really appreciate it and I'll catch you all in the next one. Take care. Goodbye.